to take this particular topic because of it's a concurrent uh, thing. So <laughs> it's very difficult, uh, very difficult to explain and a lot of times very difficult to understand also. But I will give my level best to explain uh, this thing. Just imagine what will happen our uh, our meeting flooded with lot of people. Is Tham can handle? Yes, he can handle. But if he knows earlier, he can handle. Otherwise, he can't handle. Right? Same thing will happen to the server also. Server is a hardware. If lot of threads were spanned, lot of requests were hit to the server, the server can handle. At certain point of time, it can handle. After some time, it will slowly start showing his weird behavior that nobody can understand. Nobody. So, I think a lot of people might face this kind of problems. Yeah. Even I face this problem. You also face this problem. And apart from facing this problem, debugging is a nightmare. Okay. Really, it is a nightmare. Because the first problem that we face is we can't identify which thread doing this misbehavior. The first problem that we will see is which thread is actually creating a lot of trouble. Why this is happening? Because everybody have a name. Like Tam have a name, me have a name. But when we create a thread, we forgot to name it. <laughs> <laughs> That's simple. So everybody is just simply instantiate a thread. They won't give a name to that. Okay. So if you give a name, at least, at least we can identify this is the thread which actually doing a misbehavior, right? So that is the real world, everybody facing this kind of problems, I even I also face the problem. And also one more thing, I've written a code, <coughs> written a code with proper condition saying that if this element is not there, then only add this element. I'm sure that never this flow will be broke. But sometime what happened was in my collection, I saw a size has to be 10, but a duplicate elements will be added. I am surprised by seeing the logic. Logic says perfect. Above the add into the collection, I have written a condition saying that if element is not exist, just add the element, add the element into the collection. It never break. That is what my confidence. But in production, it happened. What could be the root cause? Server is won't be accessed by a single thread, right? Single person. It can be accessed by so many number of people. Okay, good, right? Only solution that we have. Our uh, mantra is put a synchronized block. There is nothing. We no need to think at all. Just synchronize this particular thing. It will work. Yes, yeah. Keep it. Put a synchronized block. Everything will work. Some people write a synchronized method also. Okay. They'll write a synchronized method or synchronized box. Somehow they will resolve the problem. Okay. But <laughs> yeah. So a lot of people do the they will use the fundamental synchronized uh, approach and then resolve the problem. But now what happens was because of our way of synchronizing objects may lead to a problem, may lead to a deadlock also. Okay, So we have to be very careful enough when we are synchronizing an object. So whatever the synchronization that we are using is, a, is called implicit synchronization. So we are implicitly acquiring the lock by putting a synchronized method or synchronized block. Is there any different approaches are available in JDK? We, because it's available, we we intended to use that one only. We'll never try the other lock approaches that Java provides. Okay, so I'm going to attempt it. Is there any way explicitly we can lock an object? And then I'm also going to explain few other things which might be helpful in in your uh, career. So I'm just going to address them. So one example that I'm I'm just explain to you guys, I'm just trying to execute that example. So I have written a code. So I, I, I have written a one 
very good logic saying that if it is not present just add that one but what i did was i span three threads and then all three threads going to call the same method okay guess how many times this one will be printed only one time okay let's see ho oh, printed three times so this is what we we saw <laughs> if if it is in a multi threaded environment it will, you can't guarantee with if condition so what i do just remove this okay okay good right it is added only one time so this is everybody knows i'm just as part of this exercise i just want to start with very simple so that everybody can at least will be uh, go with me okay and then i want to show you one bad example also so this is what we talked synchronization at the method level what is the pr what is the problem is it solve whatever we have discussed it will it will it will allow you to add element a single time into the collection what is the problematic thing because we are adding elements with multiple thread span and then invoke this particular uh, method more number of elements will be added into the list collection instead of synchronizing on the list collection i am synchronizing on my class what if some other methods required a synchronization again you will add a synchronized so actually this is the where you have to synchronize you are synchronizing the class this class which holds all these methods right this is a bad practice we should never do like this this synchronization so that is the reason people advises if you at least use a synchronized block you will think once there also a lot of people say this but be careful when you are typing this you just understand that which object is a problematic and which object you are you are you are you are trying to stop multiple threads to enter into that not multiple locks in this case what is the object you are trying to protect list is the object that you want to protect it from multiple threads right but instead of protecting list you are protecting method which is not good but still it will solve the problem but it is not good okay okay so let's i have i have written one more uh, example which i told to you guys when the server hit more number of requests say server i know that my i i did a load testing on my server i identified that and i know that only 1000 customers will hit my server so whenever the request comes i span a thread and then i'll serve that person whenever the request will come i'll span a thread and then i will interact with that uh, client but all of sudden what happened is more than 1000 threads entered into my server and then each and every time we are creating a new threads and then uh, spanning a new threads and then serving the request and we are not even controlling the how much is my server capacity how many number of threads that i have to span okay if it is if if these are all long running task what will happen right something you can you can do the betterment over like lot of times we are talking about the caching reusing the things lot of people knows about connection reuse J jdbc connections if you are not re not reusing what will happen server will jdbc the database server also will say will die and then your optim your performance will be much bad 
okay so you have you are doing a connection pooling over there why can't you can think about same thing in thread threads case also even though it's a small objects creation you are keep on creating the objects so is there any alternative available in java instead of just simply spanning a thread like this whenever there is a need okay so java have a one one executor services available with that you can create a different types of thread pools not only a single type you can create a single thread thread pool still what we what we can do we can also achieve the same thing with this but you have to write a code you have to write a waiting code all these things you have to take care but java provided a single thread pool and fixed thread pool and then scheduled thread pool and also cached thread pool so four different pools that java provides okay so let's just see the so right now internet connection was not there so i'm just showing it to you okay i think i don't even require this one one minute yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so here when you call see i i'm i'm just crawling uh, different different websites okay i have 1 lakh websites and uh, for each website i don't want to span one thread okay i'll just take five threads pool so this five threads only going to span all, uh, crawl all 1 lakh uh, websites and then get the data and then uh, perform it so that i know that even but it will take more time to process it but it won't make your system down okay so in the same manner you can create a single thread pool also okay so single thread executor so whenever you want to perform what whatever the request that you want to uh process you want to process only with one thread you can do you can use it all other uh, requests will be queued it will be waited okay okay there is a one thing so i want to do the parallel computing so one operation there is a main thread that main thread want to continue its operations and meanwhile it want to do some sub task also so people will span another thread and then hand over that responsibility to that thread because you are also what you will do you have so many things in a day all the tasks you are only doing you can't monitor all of them you can't do it if you do it then all will become a sequential operations you are hand overing some tasks to some other people right here also same thing one thread or one one process cannot perform all those operations so what it will do is it will span multiple threads for each task so the main thread will span and it will continue or it will wait for the thread to that is i'll tell you so in this case until the task which are there in the main thread which which are there in the single thread uh, executor service main thread won't stop until you explicitly call the shutdown so you have to call the thread pool you shut down but you call the shutdown but so many tasks are there in waiting thread pool will shut down it won't shut down until you explicitly force it after processing all the requests only thread pool will get shut down so this is the way you can shut down the executor service so if you don't do this then main thread will be in waiting only it won't terminate okay okay so before ac actually before uh, we uh, jump into uh, uh, the thread pools i want to explain one thing called so i told that there is a implicit way of getting a lock there is another way to you can explicitly retain the lock also okay this is called reentrant 
log. What we will do was lot of times. Say for example, I do, I I don't want I I want to acquire the log. I want to make it as a synchronized block. I don't want to use this class. I don't want to use my collection, but I want to use some other for locking purpose itself. I will create one object, and then I will put synchronization on that object, and then I will enter it, and then perform the operation, and then I come out. Right? That is how normally people who don't want to use this or who who don't want to use uh, existing object, they'll create a new object, and then they'll synchronize it. But Java have one one class called Reenter and lock. What you can do is, whenever you, whenever you want to lock a particular, uh, whenever you want to acquire, you, whenever you want to protect a particular logic to enter by only one thread, what you can do is, you just acquire this lock. So you acquired it. Whatever the thread acquired this lock, that will, will enter. All other threads will be weighted over here itself. Okay. Then this particular task will be executed, and then it will be terminated. So you are you are just releasing the lock over here so that another threads can enter into this block. What is the difference between synchronized also doing same thing, this one also doing same thing? Is there any extra benefits this providing? That's what lot of people curious to know, right? Yes. Extra lines of code. Extra lines of code. Yes. Apart from that, it is providing some more uh, good things compared to uh, synchronized block was. It have a fairness capability. If the if if you say when you are when you are you are constructing this reentrant lock, you can specify the fairness. How much fair I am? Okay. So if long waiting threads, it will give you high priority and then it will enter into this thing. And also. In synchronized block, is it possible you can acquire the lock only certain point of time? That is not possible until the once you acquired the lock until the operation was completed, it won't release the lock at all. But here, if you using this lock, you can achieve that. In synchronized block, you can figure out that how many number of threads waiting to enter into This block, that is not possible. Here it is possible. Only one bad thing is you have to write a finally block and release it. That's the only bad thing over here. Okay, so that is the advantages. Disadvantages: writing one extra line and that too you have to write it in finally block. Okay. Correct. It's like th where you specify the thread priority. Here, the thread which is waiting longer time, it will enter into into the block. Okay. So you don't have to mention anything. Just you have to say it here when you're constructing. Just true. Okay. Okay. It won't release the lock. There is a. That's what I'm trying to say. There is a capability you. It has. You can specify the time out. So, you, so okay. you know that how much time this particular logic can take. If it is taking more than the specified amount of time, it means something wrong. Right. Say for example, inside a synchronized block, I am. I am I am hitting a server and then getting the response and then I'm processing it. So there is a network was down and then you given an infinite timeout, not a specific timeout. You given infinite timeout. What will happen? This one will be blocked. Correct. Right. So then you can then something wrong because your network was down. You are waiting infinite time. You can specify that 10 minutes max. You have to wait. Okay. Okay, so even J J J units also you are providing a capability where you can give a timeout. If this method was taking more time to execute it, you just simply skip it. Same way here also you can specify that 
lock this one until this time. Okay. Okay. So there is a timeout option like is there. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. But let's assume like uh, we have given it uh, 10 minutes of time. Okay. So after that particular thread entered and after a minute, it has just gone back to the non-execution state. Okay. There are some other threads which are trying to uh, wait, uh, came in for executing this particular method. Correct. So that new thread, which should obviously have this particular lock to continue executing, right? Whatever, see, what you are trying to say was the, the thread which is acquired, it, it is thrown some exception. No, no, no. Ah. Basically, like there are context which happens, right? Basically, okay. like let's assume like there is no guarantee in, in terms of threads. Like uh, if a thread enter into the execution state, okay. it doesn't need to complete the whole uh, mm -hmm. sequences and then it will come out of the uh, come out from the execution state. Okay. That's not guaranteed, right? Mm -hmm. So let's assume there is a thousand lines of code which is being executed. Let's okay. assume that's a bad one. And uh, after executing hundred lines, it somehow the CPU is processing. That's what I'm saying. How how that somehow will be achieved will happen? Then I can say answer. If somehow I can say exception happened. Some no, no, not, not, that's not my question actually. So th there are basically contexts which happens, right? So, oh, I, 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 one thing I tried. Uh, let's assume I there like is a new high priority thread comes in, okay. and that gets the gets into Th the execution that's state. That's what I'm trying to say. We are not giving any priority to this thread. Once you enter into this one, until the completion happen, will come out. If something exception thrown, then also will come out. There is a one more capability this has. All the waiting, all the thread which is executing on this lock, you can release it also. Oh. If you have a control over this reentrant lock, some other thread continuously monitoring this reentrant lock, then you can explicitly say that this is the thread which is taking more time. Please stop. Please release the lock for this thread. Oh. That is possible. Oh. But when when it goes to like a hype, uh, what you can say, sleep mode kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. So the only way was you have to kill that this thing and then give the lock to some other guy. Oh, okay. Okay. That is possible. Okay. Inside a synchronized bug. Once it is acquired a lock, also you can you can you can you can ask all the threads which is uh, waiting for this lock. You can allow you can stop the existing thing and then you can allow the other ones also. That capability it has. Okay. At okay. any point of time, this reentrant uh, block lock will have a single single, single one. instance. Correct. Okay, okay. So there is another lock I'm going to explain, which have two locks, oh. but it has two different contexts. Okay. I'm just going to enter into that one also. Okay. okay. Thanks. Okay. Let's run this particular thing and then see. So what I am doing? So let let's take a. Okay, so it just executed them in the sequence manner. Okay, all the threads are entered and then it executed. Don't ask why it is uh, 100 instead of 99, it is 1 or 2 because of still this logic have some problem. Okay, we have to do one more level of synchronization. Okay, so here multiple threads are accessing, but we are generating a numbers in sequential order. Okay, that is the thing that we have achieved using reentrant lock. You can replace this reentrant lock with synchronized block, still the behavior will be the same, but this is another way to acquire the lock. Okay. Which one? No, three th see still three threads enter into this condition. Uh. Okay. That's what I explained to you already, right? You, you have to acquire the lock on the object that you want to protect it. Okay, not like a, the class which hold that method. Okay. Let's I think you, you guys are cleared on reentrant lock, right? Okay. So let's go into one more lock, which is read write lock. Okay, read write 
lock. Can you guess where this one will be helpful? Okay. Correct. That's. <coughs> if you see, which one? Yeah. So <coughs> normally, cash. Take a case, cash, where you are writing once and then reading more number of times. Okay. When 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 you when you want to make it, it is like a protected. You you perform in the write also. You write a synchronized block in read also. You will put a synchronized block. That's how you will normally will do that. But reentrant lock will provide a capability. You can the read logic. Still you you can apply you can acquire the lock. But what it will do is multiple read operations. It will allow you. But at the same time, if right operation were happening, then all the read operations will be in weighted state. Okay, if the right lock is somebody acquired, then it won't allow you all the people to read it. Okay, so this this code explains that one only. So whenever you are trying to get a value, so what I did was, so I I got a one read lock and I got a one right lock from this one. So it has two locks. One I given it for read, so this get is a read, and put is a my write. Okay, so if if mul if multiple threads spanned, and then calling this get one, no lock, just will enter and then uh, perform the operations. But when some thread invoking the put operation, then what will happen? All the threads will wait at the get level because of this is the behavior of the lock. Mostly you can use it like where you have a two different operations. I don't want to make it as a dirty read. Okay, at that time I can use this locking mechanism. I can protect it the right properly and also reads also. It will be like a whatever the data which is available in. A When in a cache, you will serve it after the update. Okay. Why do you need a lock for read? You don't need a lock, but 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 what will happen? Two threads were performing this. Two threads were entered into get and put. What will happen? You won't get the. You will get a old value. right so that is the reason i just want if somebody trying to update my client has to get the fresh data that is the only intention okay this is actually just enter into this one just until this operation was not not executing this lock won't do anything just like a normal flow but one extra condition because just do that okay Correct. It will do that. It will allow you multiple threads to access. Okay, if multiple threads want to access, they will access. But when the write operation is inactive, it won't allow you until the write is completed. How are you telling that, are you telling that uh, when some other thread enters into the write, it will block the tree? Where is it? Uh, This is the logic. R dot lock is the logic. Okay, but that is W, right? Th that is that is the behavior of this re-entrant lo uh, read lock. It gives you two locks. Okay. 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 Let's good. I think at least I covered uh, two topics. Then I think let me. Let me uh, explain one more uh, thing. I think lot of people, lot of people return the producer consumer uh, problems using uh, wait and notify. Okay, lot of people have already written, but there is another way where you can you can have a blocking because wait and notify is like a blocking on particular object. That object can be the collection that you are writing, the collection that you are getting the value. so blocking queue have implicit capability okay 
so if if no elements were present in the queue okay the the consumer will wait it if there are some elements were there then consumer will proceed it so this is the so this is the blocking queue it has several implementations i'm just talking about one implementation linked blocking queue okay there is a one more uh, queue is uh, one more uh, collection is available blocking dq okay dq means double okay lot of people knows about double linked list okay this is also double correct you can add it to the first or you can add it to the last because you can decide it whether it has to be whether it has to immediately execute it or whether it has to execute at the end so that the, at that time you can use this dq okay let's run this particular program how i can figure out that these are all consumer or uh, this one as executing properly we will do one thing okay so <coughs> i am just giving because it is infinite size that i have provided okay now you are seeing a pad difference earlier it is like uh, keep on adding keep on consuming but only few people were consuming few people were placing that one because of the i given the queue size as particular thing i'll reduce it then you can again see the difference okay let's do one more thing because i have noted down the steps that i want to demo it to you guys so that is the reason okay thank you can you open the console for for the last run yeah i'll open before before running let me uh, let me complete this one and oh. then i'll take your question oh. okay because i i'm i'm giving some sleep interval so that you can figure out that what exactly the scenario was happening because i'm not giving a sleep you can't figure out that is really producer consumer was happening or not because this is the question myself raised it i have noted down because it's, it's just like a myself understanding how i have to explain to you guys this was properly working okay so that is the reason i just added some sleep so either way you can figure out that this was this programming was working this code was blocking a thread and then waking up the other thread yeah now santosh tell me what is your question so uh, earlier run what i notice is like uh, the size we have given as two right correct so but i noticed like i mean it, it was observed that like there were uh, uh, four items in the produce section okay one minute so yeah so we have two we have given earlier we have given in the console what what observed was like there were four items like uh, okay. present produce yeah now also we have uh, uh, without uh, sleep probably you may give okay. it a try two okay i'll stop it yeah, yeah somewhere Okay. what is it like uh, is it this uh, when we say that see this one this you can't con you can't thread you can't figured out that the console it is printed after producing only the line may be come after that if okay. you give a sleep interval then you can easily figured out that okay okay this is nothing to do with that actual behavior yes. okay fine okay yeah and another question with related to the previous discussions that the reentrant correct yeah so you have, have so many questions i think we will ask oh. we'll do the later yeah. okay
okay let's let's go to the other one that i want to explain it to you guys was apart from runnable there is a one more thing available called callable right <laughs> i have so many times one question which is which is in my mind was when i want to stop a thread all the times what i will what i will do was i will write one because my thread infinitely it want to perform some operation and it want to stop some some time only solution that i have was or if my thread perform some operation i want to get out value from that thread only solution that i have was i'll maintain one instance variable after the thread completion i'll just say one getter method when the thread is completed i'll call that getter method and then i'll get the result this is how i used to code it with specific to threads which it want to return some data okay same thing if thread was throwing some exception to get that information also i'll write one getter method and then figure out that what is the happened i think lot of people might may did like this but there is another way another flavor available called callable which is provides extra capabilities which have a written thing and also which is which will throw an exception okay so two additional capabilities that you can get it with this callable okay how good it's good right because people who want the other flavor they no need to write an extra code to do this just they can use a callable interface and then get that information okay so let's let's see this one okay i have to accept i have to explain the demo scenario exception scenario also i'll just do that so before that i didn't show you guys uh, somebody asked me a question that the main method will exit or not so i'll show you now yeah main method will continue or not right yeah now i'll show you that one so there is a <coughs> fixed thread pool i have created with thread size as 10 and then there is a 100 threads i am spanning okay not a single thread 100 threads i am going to span okay so here it is like this so i am constructed one callable instance okay callable instance i am added that i just submitted that callable instance okay when i submit it immediately i will get a future which actually holds the return from that thread also holds the exception from that thread okay but after the execution only this one will have a value if the thread was not completed then it won't hold a value when you are asking give me the value then it will block you until that thread will return will return okay so let's run this one okay first of all let me run with uh, executor service because i am not spanning 100 threads i am spanning 10 threads at a time so if you can if you can see this one you can you can able to figure out there is 100 entries were there not printed all at the same time all not executed all at the same time so now i am just i can go and have a tea also this one won't terminate <laughs> okay it will just a wait the main method it will be blocked because of you are not terminating the the thread pool okay do you want to me wait some more time or i can uh, okay <laughs> 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 okay 
yeah i think i need uh, i need another 5 uh, minute 10 minutes to explain two concepts that is from narendran so i want to explain for him okay i think everybody was clear right okay so let's look into uh one uh, good topic which was counter latch okay what is latch i think people if you can understand the meaning for the latch i think they can easily connect it to this example i think i just i even i don't know the uh, what is latch i just googled it latch images so then it shown that lock you have right that lock you can call it as latch means you can stop somebody to enter it you, st you stop this you close this door with latch then nobody can enter it okay that is what your intention was and if you open it all the people can enter so some way you have to stop the threats to end to execute some logic until you open the door okay so that is the example for this thing so i have uh, two latches i have created one is to to wake all the waiting threats another me to awake after completion of all other threats okay say for example somebody entered in all the people exited from the home from this room if still i keep the door open so <laughs> thief will come right so that is that is might happen so you can you can understand the example like that okay when when un, when when all the threats ready to execute okay i have to stop all the people to enter into uh, execution once i give a signal after all the people get executed i have to know that all the all of them were done i can close my shop so that is a simple scenario that we can achieve it with this thing okay i have which one correct but all the threats all the threats until you give a signal there without your permission all of them will execute without your permission all of them will execute because you spanned it you are you said please happily enter if you happily execute the logic shut down just will it will wait all the threats to complete that operation same thing all the threats internal if you if you look into the internal implementation they also using this kind of logic only okay but i i don't want that flavor i want some okay how i have to say some people have one recipe they'll take only part out of the recipe and then create another uh, thing here we are trying to understand that that whatever the question that you have asked right how it knows that all the threats are completed then only it will stop we are trying to understand that flavor you can treat it like that okay so here what i did was i have started several worker threats and then i am giving this start signal and then done signal so what happened was so inside this thing i'm just said wait so all these people will wait from for this star signal how you can generate the star signal you can just say count down count down 1 to 0 okay here i given a count as 1 down 0 so all other threads will enter into this particular block so on the same time what i did was i am waiting all the threads to complete this is the main thread all the chaining threads all the ch all the span threads continue for execution so i am just again i am doing countdown because i am span 10 threads all 10 threads once it completes the operation it will down one count other thread also will down one count other thread also will down count at the end zero you will receive the main thread will come out from this okay 
so this is the purpose of the countdown latch i think everybody might un might understand this one but if not understand also you you yourself try to understand it with some examples <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay let's let's go to the another uh, but i think this example only our purpose was i have to know that all the threads were spanned all the threads were completed their operation simple thing if you can understand with uh, yeah like you, you the, the other uh, so he asked a question right so same co uh, i'm asking the same actually somewhat same yeah. thing right now you said uh, our purpose was to know that all threads are executed the correct. same thing we are getting when you are executing executor pool correct right? so why do we need we need so to that, that's what <laughs> what i'm trying to say was if i don't want to there you can span any number of threads here okay. i'm spanning certain number of threads say if you look into it i'm spanning 10 threads and then i put my count latch as a 10 okay so if your uh, number of threads are 10 and correct. your countdown latch is 5 correct. so at a time only 5 will enter something like that it won't l be like that okay. my purpose was i spanned all the threads i want to know that all the threads were completed i have to terminate okay um, it's a fixed size okay there it's a dynamic size you can you okay. how many number of threads also can enter into the thread pool only thing was that you said was only 5 threads only will be spanned mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but n number of threads can enter Okay. All the n number of threads will be completed only. You can do this one. Okay. But here, here you're controlling how many? Correct. If five okay. five threads were completed, the operation also this one will come out. Okay. Okay. No okay. Yeah, yeah. So that is the okay. difference. Okay. Uh, that is what I'm trying to say. We are taking part of that. This logic that is implemented is over there also, okay. but a different flavor. Okay. Okay, let's quickly look into the uh, cyclic barrier. Again, I'm asking you, how many of you know about barrier? Lot of, if, if something, some uh, revolution happened, then lot of students will uh, try to enter into either some assembly or some people will put a barricade, right? All the people should not enter into uh, that premises. So it's also barrier just stop you at certain thing, okay? So here what will happen is the other beauty with this uh, barrier was after all the people completed, it's like a cyclic. You can use the same uh, thing continuously, but the countdown latch is not like that, okay? So here what I'm doing is I'm spanning 10 threads and uh, after the completion of, I think uh, this is uh, another uh, scenario to explain to you guys. So I'm, I'm just entered into this one and then executed uh, some operation. Sorry, executed some operation. So all 10 threads spanned completed that uh, their task. Okay. After that, I want to notify and then I want to perform some other operation. Okay, so here this one will be helpful. So my main thread is not waiting, but what will happen is this piece of logic will execute. After the all the threads are completed their operation, whatever the operation that I specified, it will get executed. That is the beauty with cyclic barrier. Okay, so where you can, maybe there is a situation where you, you might need this kind of thing. So that is the reason they have provided. Man, our real applications may not require it, but there is a use cases where after all the people completed their operation, my operation has to execute. Okay, let's see this one. Right, so you just see all threads reach the expected state. Okay. So this guy is waiting all the people to perform this operation. Huh? One fork join uh, was that you want or? Uh, huh? Okay, so fork join, I, I, I think because a lot of people 
big data, Hadoop and all talking internally, they use as a fork join uh, thing only. Let me explain uh, that one. How many of you know this thing? Okay, one minute. Let me. Uh, oh, one minute, one minute, one minute. Fork, yeah. How many of you know without using any loops? Printing all the characters inside a string. Okay. Without using any loops. Loops. I want to print all the characters inside a string. Okay. Right? 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 Everybody said answer. So this is the program is for doing the same thing. Okay, so I, I have I have not used any loop, but it is given all the characters inside a string. Simple thing was recursion. All of you answered this question. Very good. Let's see Wait. what is the core. Oh, Praisa, you have to sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so why I explained this particular to topic was fork join. If you want to understand the fork join concept, you might understand the recursion. Okay, then it will be very uh, interesting for you. So that is the reason I explained that example. So here fork join provided one thing called recursive task. Okay. Say why the fork join is required. So there is a very complex task. I divided the complex task into subtasks. Okay. And after the completion of all the subtasks, I have to gather the result and then show that result. Simple thing, fork, one spoon have five forks, right? Five. So you, 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 you separated the, you, un, you know that all the subtasks, you span it five threads and then given it these things. After the completion, you gather the result from all these people and then perform something. Okay, for explaining this thing, what I did was, I, I taken a folder example where I have several folders and those folders have uh, some other folders. Those folders have some other folders. I'm, I am detecting how many number of files with extension log were there in that folder. Okay, so what I will do was for say for example, the root folder have five uh, subfolders. So what I will do was you just understand this logic. So what I'm doing was, I, I'm, 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 I'm instantiating my task. Okay, once I identified there is a folder inside an another folder. So I'm creating this task and I'm joining, I'm forking this task. Who is the parent for this one? Whoever have this method is the parent for this fork. Like GitHub, I think a lot of people knows, right? If you say fork, you know, you can figure out that who is the parent for this fork. Same, you are asking child fork, then it knows that who is my, from where I spanned it. So same thing, we are saying that it has a fork. So I just said it has a fork and then I am keeping that fork list, okay? And then what happening was, like this, this one will, when you say fork, it will again internally will do the same thing. It will go and then this particular task, right? This particular compute method will be executed on the forked object. And again, it will figure out that how many child folders were there. Again, if some other child folders were there, again, this logic will be executed because it's all recursion, but you are not executing the compute method. But when you say fork internally, somebody will execute the recursion method to do that one. Okay. So I have executed all of them. I got a task. So once I got a task, what I am doing? Add result. All the task, I'm just adding them into this list. Okay. So this list will give me how many number of files were there. Okay. 
So let's execute. That is the implementation we'll call. Okay, whenever you call the fork uh, join, so what I am doing was here you just see. So I am just, I am just, I am just created one uh, fork join pool, and inside a fork join pool, I have given all the recursion tasks. That's it. I am just calling this thing. Please execute this one. Please execute this one. Please execute this one. So this execute method internally will call the compute method like run method who will call like callable method uh, who will call like this somebody will call behind you this method okay so i'm just created one thing i'm just created all this recursion task and then given it to this fork uh, join pool and then after execution i got the results and then i'm joining them okay Okay, so it told that 32 files found. So let's go and then look into. Sorry, demo, 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 demo. Oh, sorry, demo fork. Sorry, fork demo one two three folder. I have created demo one two three. Three like this. Let's star dot log. If uh, if answer uh, comes wrong, don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> just chumma. So I'm just want to. Okay, it came forty. What it is shown? Okay, thirty two and then four files and then four files found. Okay. I'm just chumma. <laughs> okay, I think I have, uh, yeah, thanks for uh, giving. <laughs> <laughs>